I'm in a place I wanna be. I'm fighting things no one can see. Why are they still here? Hey everybody, welcome to the Wednesday Shorts Nutrition Series. My name is John Tagliari. You guys know who I am. Welcome back to the Fit Show Kitchen. Uh, today with me to talk some nutrition and healthy habits, I have Nicole O'Coin. She is joining us from Florida from Healthy Steps Nutrition. Nicole, how are you doing today? Doing well. How are you? Good. It was kind of a take two. We thought I was. I thought we were on the air, but for some reason we weren't. So let's let's take that over. Thank you, Facebook, for for that. Um, it, it burps occasionally. I don't. You know, sometimes it's frustrating with Facebook. Um, okay. So once again, let everybody know who you are. We'll start there, and then we'll keep going. Yeah, sure. So I'm a registered dietitian. I own a nutrition practice in South Florida in Deerfield Beach and also own a CrossFit gym. So I've been in the nutrition and fitness industry for over 10 years. Um, and about two and a half years ago, we started helping CrossFit implement nutrition around the world. So we work with affiliates. I've written journals for, or written articles for the CrossFit journal to help businesses implement nutrition um, so that there's more of a full, um, you know, a total, total approach rather than just focusing on exercise or just focusing on fitness. You really need to combine the two for people to see good results. Now you, uh, interesting. Hold on one second. Let's cut that. So you, uh, right. Just making sure we got none of that. You, um, I met you through a gym that we worked with heard on the show, I believe, Nick Ceruta. Mm hmm Yep. So he was is running our nutrition program um, at his facility, and basically we help provide him the support to implement nutrition at his facility. Um, it mimics everything that we do in my private practice, my the medical nutrition therapy part, uh, but we are able to give him all the tools that he needs to be able to talk to his members confidently and implement a nutrition component to his gym. Awesome. And yeah. he's got a great facility. So I told you that I recently became a uh, personal trainer mm -hmm. and I am working uh, out of his gym. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay. I'm his one not CrossFit option for his members because I don't do CrossFit. I'm not a CrossFit uh -huh. guy. Uh, I'm an endurance and a uh, functional fitness guy because I, I run triathlons and things like that. So he, Nick has brought me awesome. in to be his option to his members. Um, cool. So we want to talk today about um, goal setting, about welcome to the new year. We're, we're two days in and everybody's making their resolutions. The gym has been packed the last two days, I can tell you that. Um, mm -hmm. But we also know that everybody is setting goals without setting plans to keep them. So yeah. as, as a nutritionist and as somebody who focuses on helping people with that, what is what would you tell a new client jumping in right now? You know, we know that the number one resolution has to deal with weight loss and health. And it's great to say you're going to lose weight. I even had one of my personal training clients today tell me that he wanted to get down 15 pounds, um, you know, over the next few months. And my next question was like, how are you going to do that? So great. You have an idea. Let's put some plans into this idea to figure out what's going to change. Oh, that hasn't changed yet that you're going to help yourself achieve those goals. You know, you can talk to someone. We can talk about your goals all day, but if you're not actually taking action on anything, then how are you going to be able to achieve them? So that's the biggest thing is to be able to set realistic goals, but then have that plan and how we help clients formulate a plan is figure out what they're doing now. So you have to ask questions like, what does a typical day look like? How much water do you drink? Um, you know, what, what are you eating in the morning and what are you eating throughout the day or around your workout time so that you can help and guide them to what's realistic for them? If you have a client that is coming in that is used to eating a buffet every day, <laughs> and this is a true story. I'm not exaggerating this at all. I had, um, he was about 350 pounds. He came in, he ate a buffet every single day oh um, for lunch. 
Wow. And he lived near a casino, had... did he? Or no, he just <laughs> a ton of complications too from you know weight related, and he's ready to make a change at that point. And, you know, if I were to tell him, okay, you need to prep every meal and portion every meal and weigh out all your food. And Skype has frozen. Hang on one second. We, we lost our Skype signal. Uh oh, hang on, everybody. Bear with me just a moment. We seem to have lost our Skype signal. <clears throat> Are you there? Sorry, I, for, yeah. I, okay, I'm okay. here now. There we go. We're back. Um, We're back. All right, perfect. So you know, meeting with him and setting up a plan for him is not going to look like prepping and portioning his meals every day. That's not a realistic change. That's too much to change right. at one time. So let's start off with getting you some go-to places to go eat for lunch that's more portion controlled and that I know you're going to be able to stay on track, at least a step in the right direction from the Chinese buffet that you're going to every day versus a client that is already prepping meals, just eating too much. All right, now we can dial in portion sizes and get you more on a specific plan. That's a realistic step. So, you know, as a nutrition coach, a dietitian, um, you know, even someone that's looking to lose weight, you need to look at what's a realistic step and not take yourself A to Z in one day. You're not going to be able to sustain that. Right. And it's one of the things we actually talk about with Jeff, Jeff and I on, on the Monday show is that we say, do one thing. This week, yeah. do one thing. Take one step yep. this week. Next week, take another step. Next week, take yep. another step. Next thing you know, you're 10 steps down the line and you're in a far healthier place. But if you tried to do this all at once, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to stop. You're going to fail. Um, it's overwhelming. Yeah, I think people do. They they take on uh, too much at once um, just out of uh, being so gung-ho about, I'm going to do it, you know, and and uh, it's it's the planning and it's the, um, it, it's the, uh, the lack, it's the lack of planning, I should say, that does them in more than their will to be able to do it. I think, you know, there's a few things that, that go involved. You have to have a set plan, right? You have to plan out. Even for me, you know, when I'm coaching until 7.30 at night, the last thing I want to do is go home and prep a full meal. Hopefully, we have food prep, so all I have to do is heat something up. Or even better, I'm bringing something to the gym with me so I'm not eating at 9 o'clock at night when I get home from coaching. You know, if people have things that they've planned out, it's going to be much easier to stay on track. Now, how do you get somebody into a regimen of say Sunday night is your meal prep night. You're going to, you're going to prep 16 meals for the week. How do you get somebody into that habit? So we start with two meals. Like let's just take two crock pot dishes um, or use a meatloaf muffin tin or, you know, a muffin tin and make meatloaf muffins that it'll make 12. We have a ton of recipes on our website. You know, if you make 12 meatloaf muffins and you eat two of them for a meal, that's six days of meals that you could have six, six lunches or six dinners. Right. You know, that's a great option. Or if you have a spouse, you split that. And if you make two, then you can go back and forth and at least have those staples in the house. And you don't have to go from not prepping anything to prepping everything. Cause that is a big change for people. Yeah. Um, it's a huge change and it's a commitment. You know, most people don't block out two hours on their Sunday to sit and prep their food for the week. It's not flattering. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not the fun way to spend a Sunday, but it does really help you set yourself up for success during the week. And if you have your family or, you know, a spouse or a significant other that's on board too, it makes it easier if you split the work. Yeah. You know what though? You can make it fun. And I think that's what some people have to do. They have to find their love for the cooking. I, I love to be in the kitchen. That's why we have our show. Um, yeah. You know, and, and when I'm in the kitchen and when I'm cooking, I have fun with it. So, you know, they got to, they got to find a way to not look at it as an arduous task as much as look at it as, Grab your spouse, have some fun in the kitchen and make your yeah. meals for the week kind of thing. Um, yeah. You know, that that I think would be, um, it, it's a mindset that people would, would benefit from that they, oh, I got to go cook, you know? 
You know, I think too, it's um, making it a lifestyle, right? So instead of having an end date, you know, saying I'm on this strict diet, it's more like this is the way I'm going to eat. You know, I have a a client at the gym that she came in a year ago and she had never worked out a day in her life. She had gained 50 pounds over two years. And she's like, Nicole, help me. And some people aren't ready for the nutrition piece first. Most people aren't because that's the toughest part. Right. Um, So we started with exercise and at, you know, the first few weeks in CrossFit, we were a brand new facility at that time. Um, she was doing half the workout and sitting down for the second half and walking for most of it and just not really doing much at all, but she was doing something. And then it finally got to a point where she started seeing some good results. And we know that if we track success, it gives people more motivation. So if you're trying to lose weight and you're tracking where you're at and then you see the numbers go down, it's going to motivate you to change and to continue. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why we have people track not only their weight and body fat, but also measurements and take progress pictures so they can see the difference. Because when you're looking at yourself every day, you don't you don't notice as much as looking at a picture from a month ago or two two months ago, right. how much has really changed. It's funny because um, so I, I'm a big accountability person and I, I'm a big social media guy. So I post a lot of things on social media and people would say to me, dude, why do you put things up there? I mean but they don't realize that I'm not putting them up there for everybody else to see. I'm putting them up there because now I've made it public. And once it's public, it's accountable. Yeah. And it's funny when I, uh, when I lost all the weight, people are like you're too skinny. And I'm like, am I too skinny? Or were you just used to me being chubby? So I posted a before and after picture and people were like, Whoa, you look good. <laughs> we didn't realize how much you were big. And I think, yeah, I don't even think I did. Like you just said, until I put those two pictures side by side, as although I was looking at them every day, once you see them like this, it clicks and you're like, wow, I'm working. And that's something a lot of people don't, um, there's, there, I'll get back to the mindset stuff. There's an interesting mindset. People don't want to see themselves badly, you know? And yeah, and it, it's, they know it's hard. And sometimes people just aren't ready to make, make a change. Yes. And it's, it's, you've got to be ready to make a change. You've got to be ready to, um, be held accountable to commit to it. You've got to be ready to say enough's enough. I need to be healthy. Um, yeah. And nobody can do that, but you, you're the one who's exactly. got to make that change. Um, but when, when, uh, that's where people like you come in for those who want to make the change, but don't understand how they don't have the mindset, how they've never taught themselves how, and that's where well, someone like you is so beneficial to holding people accountable. I think too, it's, there's so much information on the internet and people don't know. I met with a girl, um, over the weekend and she's in a wedding and she's ready to lose some weight. She's, I think she's in two weddings and has three more to go to. She's, there's a total of five weddings this year. And she's telling me about all these nutrition bloggers that she follows. And she has so much mixed information about nutrition from all these bloggers that she just doesn't even know what to do. And some people have that paralysis by analysis. There's just too much information out there. It's conflicting and they just don't know what to do. So they do nothing. Well, it's like we were speaking uh, briefly before we got on the air about the fad diet of the week. Yeah. So let go, let's go into that a little bit. Um, how does someone, I, I hate the word diet. I, I preach about it all the time. Like Atkins drives me crazy. Oh, I'm doing Atkins. How'd that go for you? Well, I lost 25 pounds. What happened once you stopped? Well, I put 20 of it back it. on. <laughs> of course you yeah. did. Here's a box. Eat it. Here's a bar. Eat it. Here's a shake. Drink it. But they don't teach yeah. you things. The fad diets don't teach you anything. So how would you approach a client who's like, I saw the, this celebrity doing this and this celebrity trainer doing that. And I think that's what's perfect for me. How do you educate them from that? Well, I think you need to look at the source of the information first. Um, like what's the science behind it? Yeah, with registered dietitian, everything's science-based. So you have to look at, okay, let's look at the history, long-term success, where does that end you? Um, if it sounds too good, if you're taking pills to make you lose weight, is that going to teach you? That means you're on the pills for the rest of your life. Right. Is that teaching you anything? Um, you know, if you go to someone and this happens all the time and people approach me all the time about selling these different multi-level marketing schemes, right? Um, if you, if you go to someone and all they're doing is pushing products that they sell down your throat, 
you need to turn away and run. And I've seen it so many times. I've had teen girls with eating disorders um, and just teen girls in general come to me after going to a local chiropractor down the street where they told them to only one salad a day and then the rest of it is going to be um, the soy bars that they sell there. It's like, it's so sad, but people don't know. And if you're hearing it from someone, you, you don't, you don't know what's right. And everything's geared that it, it'll see quick results and everyone wants quick results. Right. So if you, we live in a very now that, society. Yeah. Yeah, we do. And unfortunately the real trick or the real um, secret to weight loss is it's not easy and it's not going to be quick. It's all those habits didn't get formed in a day and it's not going to change in a day. And you really have to focus on more of a long-term approach and disease prevention. That's everything that I believe in. And, you know, my whole background, my mom was diagnosed with cancer when I was really young and we completely changed our diet and lifestyle. And I saw firsthand the role that nutrition plays in your body with disease and how it affects you. And that's where our philosophy is. And that's what we really preach to people is like, I don't care how much weight you can lose. I care about how healthy you are and how much weight you can keep off and what kind of role model you're being for your kids. If you're shoving all these protein drinks and bars down your throat, what are your kids going to want to do when they get older and they have weight issues? Like everyone should be on the same page at home and everyone should be having the goal of living a healthy long life, not just achieving weight loss right now. Right. And I fully agree. Um, I think, um, I, I don't know that I would say the weight loss part is hard. It's not hard. It's just simply making the right choices. That's not, the hard part is the mental part, I think. Yeah, it is the mental part. It, it's not so much the losing the weight, uh, for me, the losing the weight, I, I've never said is the hard part. It's the committing to it is the hard part. Once you can commit to eating healthy, shopping the periphery of the store, staying away from the yeah. processed foods, um, eating the right amounts. So many people I talk to, oh, I want to lose weight. I'm cutting all these calories out. I'm like, no, 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 eat, eat. Please eat and eat. The, the, oh, if I eat less, I'll lose weight. No, you won't. No, you really won't. And they don't want to educate. That's the hard part, I think, to everybody is the is the commitment and the education of what to do. The what's the easy part. Eat clean, eat fairly often, supply your body, especially if you're going to the gym. You know, a 150 pound guy right out of bed needs 1,550 calories just to start his day, right? Give or take. And then if he goes to the gym and burns another thousand calories and then he mows the lawn and then he does anything else, but then he only eats 1,500 calories for the day, his body's going to hoard, you know, everything he's eaten because it does, he's not getting enough nutrition. You know, and those are the people who are like, well, I, I, I've been to the gym six days in a row or, or, you know, six months now and I'm doing the same thing and I'm not seeing any results. Well, because you're doing the same thing, you're not fueling, you're not work, you're not varying your workouts, you're not letting your body adapt. It's the education and I think that's where people get lazy and that's where it becomes difficult. It's, it's a mindset. Uh, yeah. It's all about the mindset that you have and making it more of a lifestyle than, you know, something that has an end date. You don't, you don't need an end date. <laughs> now, what do you, what do you say to the people who go, who say, uh, I'm going to cut carbs out or I'm going to cut my calories down. What's, uh, what's your no, well, don't you do need, that take. <laughs> you, I tell them why, like, why do you need carbohydrates? Why are they important for your body? What are they going to do? What's going to happen when you do cut all of that out? Um, when you severely restrict your diet, what happens? Why do you not want to? Not, why do you not want to cut everything out? So explaining the why kind of helps people understand a little bit more um, rather than, you know, get these quick notions of, well, if I cut all the calories, it's calories in versus calories out, right? So if I severely restrict my calories, I'll lose all the weight. Not necessarily. Uh, but that's what they think. And you just have to relate to people because um, if you just make them feel and even how silly some things that people say they might be, or you think they might be, but that's what they think. So you need to relate to them. Well, honestly, a, a lot of people think that, but this is, you know, the truth of the matter and helping them understand, kind of sort the fiction from the facts is 
you know, really what your job is as a nutrition coach or a dietitian or anyone that has a nutrition background to help people understand why they need to do what you're asking them to do. Um, somebody here is asking about air frying. Now, I know that I don't fry anymore. I used, I used We had a deep fryer here in the house when I was, uh, I was laid up for about a year and a half and, and I, I got very comfortable on the couch eating pizza and fried chicken <laughs> and I use my deep fryer frequently. Um, I've actually wondered about them as well, the, the, the air fryers that use no oils. What do you think of those? Are those even worth using? Or are Honestly, they still I... ending up making bad food? I, I, you know, I've seen some people post about air fryers recently. Um, I've never used one before and I don't honestly know too much about them. Uh, we recommend that people, you know, bake and grill, use a crock pot, use an instant pot. Have you ever used one of those, an instant you, pot? You know, uh, Jeff, Jeff, uh, my co-host for the fit show has an instant mm -hmm. pot and I actually asked him to bring it over this past Monday, but I asked him like an hour before the show and he couldn't bring it. But I want to get one as well because I've heard it's, nothing but great things about them. It is a game changer. You can cook everything under 15 minutes. You throw it all in there. It's a crock pot on steroids. It's so <laughs> easy. It's so easy and it it makes a meal. It makes you know everything that you could ever want so fast. Now, is it basically like a convection pressure cooker? It's a pressure cooker slash crock pot in combined in one. Okay. So you're crock potting things in a pressure cooker, uh, but it's it's easy. It's so easy. That would be something to definitely have on the have on the show because I tell everyone to get one, especially the people that are that time is an issue. Which for most people, time is the issue. But if you can throw something in in 15 minutes, it's done. Right. How? That's simple. Yeah. If it's and, simple, and, you'll stick with it. And that is that is and that's something else we even talk about a lot on the show is is uh, convenience versus comfort. Uh, well, McDonald's was cheaper, so I went there. No, McDonald's was more convenient because you didn't have to cook. We can cook far cheaper than McDonald's. We, one of the things we pride ourselves on the show is that none of our dishes cost more than about five bucks. And we're eating chicken with broccoli and cauliflower. We're making thick, big, fat steaks. It's, you can shop and eat for less than five dollars a plate and I'm talking eat well versus the convenience of fast food yeah you know there's a difference between between the two and that's that something like that would make that argument completely moot <laughs> yeah you know I think when we ask about eating out I, I dive into it a lot because that's where a lot of people have a struggle with they can't stay on track when they eat out and you know, asking why, why do you eat out? Is it because you don't have food prepped or is it because you have client lunches? Well, you can't tell someone they can't go to a client lunch. Right. So let's figure out a way to go around that. Um, but if it's, you know, that you don't have time on the way home or you're tired or convenience, then let's, let's figure out another way that we can do it at home. But if it's more of a work thing, you have all these work lunches, then let's find a place or find something that can help you stay on track when you do go out. So digging into it a little bit more is what helps people come up with a plan that's sustainable. Uh, Jeff just actually chimed in because he's watching and he said he loves his Instapot. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody just asked, can you cook from frozen and Instapot? And George, yes, you can. From what I understand, yeah. you could take a, a frozen chicken and drop it in the Instapot and in 15, 20 minutes, you're ready to eat. So, yeah. Um, it's good too. It's moist, tender. It's delicious. Okay, so... Uh, we're, we're coming down to the end. So the takeaway from, from what we want everybody to think from, from today is have your resolution, but have your resolution with a plan and educate yourself on it and do the plan incrementally. Don't jump into this big extravagant plan that you're going to be disheartened because parts of it don't work. Do one piece at a time work your way through it, right? Absolutely. You know, testing and staying accountable is another big piece of it. So find an accountability partner to help you stay on track. You know, if you have someone that's doing it with you or a coach that's guiding you is going to help you stay on track and testing your progress is another thing that we really recommend all of our clients doing. So we know that success leads to motivation. So they should be tracking their weight and body fat and doing measurements and taking progress pictures so that that motivates them to continue with what they're doing. 
And if you don't have an accountability partner, you have us here at The Fit Show. We are, we are here every week to try to help you guys. So if you're finding yourself struggling, send us a note. I'll gladly be your accountability partner and I'll make you send me pictures every week and I'll make you tell me <laughs> your weight and we will make sure you stay accountable. Um, and if not me, Jeff, we, we, we will make sure that you guys stay accountable if you don't have somebody. Nicole, I want to thank you for coming on today. Where can everybody find you online? Where can everybody find you if they want to work with you? We know you work with people around the world, so it doesn't matter where they are. So, um, You can go to the website, healthystepsnutrition.com, or you can email me at Nicole at healthystepsnutrition.com. Okay. Are you obviously you're on Facebook? Oh, yep. On Facebook, Healthy Steps Nutrition. Um, on Facebook, Healthy Steps Nutrition. <laughs> uh, Twitter? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, anything you'd like to leave us with? You know, I think it's a new year, so everyone's motivated. And if you're trying to make a change this year, I commend you and just keep it simple, one step at a time, and, and you can do it. Just just stay on track and have a plan. And there you go. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, everybody, make sure if you have any questions, reach out. Um, she's amazing. Um, and uh, let me see if there's any other questions. Uh, everybody is saying thank you. <laughs> You're um, so welcome. All right. Well, everybody have an awesome day. Uh, have a great week. Uh, next Monday on The Fit Show, we have Ariel Artemis, who was a beach body champion uh, and at 35 after having three kids. So she's got a lot to tell. She's got an amazing story. So you're going to want to tune in Monday. Nicole, thank you so much for being on today. And uh, everybody stay safe. Mm -hmm.